This, this one, this question was quite clearly trying to mess with you, okay? But, but if you are careful and methodical about it, and to be honest, like, sorry, if, you, if you're struggling a little bit, I know there's a lot of trig identities to learn, right? So it can get easy to confuse them with each other. Um, you need to settle it for yourself now that if this was one that tripped you up, then it's showing that it's okay. It's like you kind of know them, but you don't, you don't really know them well because there's only really one way to go through this. And it's not that complicated, okay? But if you mistook it for something else, that's where you really had trouble. Okay. So, what was the most easy thing to mistake this for? I'll show you, right? You see tans, you see tans, you see a one plus tan squared, okay? So your brain is thinking, your brain is thinking this. Right? You're thinking, oh, I recognize this one. This is double egg and it's hand, right? And if you start thinking about this, fairly quickly the problem emerges. And this is what I mean by if you know it well, you wouldn't have met, you wouldn't have mistook it, right? But you know, it's exams, you're rushing. Anyhow, this is what would have happened. You would have said, okay, two tan x. I don't have a two at the front, but that's no big deal. It's just a constant. I can fix that up in a second. And then you'd say divided by, now pause. If you remember, not only have we done, um, you know, all of the identities, we've also gone from those identities and we've taken them elsewhere. We learned auxiliary angle off of all of the sine and cos expansions. And then we learned T results off of this expansion, right? So hopefully the cogs are turning and you should have remembered that there's one minus tan squared down here on the bottom. Okay. Now, as soon as you see that, you know that that's disqualified for being useful for this question. Because not, that's not what you have here, okay? But of course, you're a bit rushed and you're like, yeah, no, of course, it's a one plus. It must be a plus, right? And then you get to, oh, that must be 10 30, half of 10.30. It's not working for me. What's going on? Right? So this is what we should have done instead. This is a proof, right? I show that. So clearly you've got to start from one side and then work to the other. The left-hand side is clearly the obvious one. So I'm going to go 10, 15 on one plus. Okay, now, when you look at this, that one plus tan squared should be jumping out at you, especially when you've disqualified this as an option, and say, this is the Pythagorean identity. It's not one of the more common, well, the common one is sine squared plus cos squared equals one. So you, by now you recognize, when you see one minus sine squared, you know what that's equal to. When you see one minus cos squared, you know what that's equal to. This one's less familiar. So as I've said, my best strategy, you know, I try and memorize as little as possible and just remember where things come from, right? Because then you won't get them wrong. Memorizing can really screw you over, as we saw, right? So this result is the fundamental one. And if I want to take that and have it in terms of ones and tan squares, what do I divide by? I divide by cos squared, don't I, right? So if I divide this by cos squared, it becomes tan squared. This becomes the one that I'm after. And what's over here on the right hand side? It's sec, isn't it? Sec squared, I should say. So knowing that, I have sec squared 15 degrees on the denominator. Now just bear in mind, paying attention to the number of marks that this is worth, you don't, you didn't need to have written down all of these lines of working. I'm just trying to make the logic clear. Had I been solving this question and I saw what it was worth, I would pretty much jump like two or three steps at least because I can see what's going on and I know based on the number of marks I don't need to write it okay where am I going to go from here okay um, I've got 10 at the top I've got sex squared on the bottom now both of those are identities they're both identities in terms of sine and cos so I'm going to rewrite them in those terms right so I've got sine on cos that's my numerator right and I'm dividing by this thing over here, which is 1 over cos squared. Right? It's 1 over cos squared. Okay. So being that I'm dividing by a reciprocal, what I'm really doing is multiplying by what that denominator is. So I'm multiplying by cos squared, which is why one of these will cancel, and I'll just be left with this. Okay, and this we should recognize. This we should recognize, right? This is, to put it again, like this is not a line of working I would write down, but just so you can see what my brain is doing, right? This is half of double sine 15 plus 15, right? Why did I bother putting a half and a two out the front? 
so that I can get the double angle result in here. 2 sine x cos x, that's sine 2x. Right? So I can go straight to that thing, half of sine 30, that's half of half, which is a quarter. Okay, so this is, like I keep saying, this is far more lines than I would have written for the number of marks that are there. But you can see the cogs that were turning in my brain for me to get there. Even this part here, right? I admit the first time I picked up this paper, I looked at it because I, I was there with you. And um, I look and I just did the mental computation in my head for tan 30. And I was like, that's not, it's one over three, isn't it? How are you going to get a quarter out of that? And then I realized... I'd, I'd forgotten this, and I did this, and I, oh, okay, now I see where it's going. Okay, that's a part of the working. That's a part of the logic of how I got there. That's how I know that this isn't what's useful. Does that make sense? 